What's up guys, welcome back on the channel, welcome back on this Saturday evening, uh, Inter game is getting extremely close, uh, I know the focus kind of shifted because of the Alcaraz news this week, however, I did put out a, a preview with Alberto, go check that out, I did a preview with uh, Anthony, a live show yesterday with from the Inter channel, so check that out, this one is about the midfields, and I will have a video out as well tomorrow to just Look at the stats of Inter in general uh, going into what is probably the biggest game <clears throat> in the last, I don't know, four, four seasons, basically. Um, it is. Um, this was an idea from, from a member. Uh, so I'm going to do my best because I looked up a few stats <clears throat> and actually certain things we kind of knew. <clears throat> excuse me. And other things quite quite surprising actually one of them is on the screen now so i'll try to do my best i deliberately did not like i, I looked over the stats and i'm going to show but i didn't really look all too deep in that because i wanted to be kind of surprised on the stream because um i think i made my mind up before i actually looked at it i made my mind up before i went into the game you know and thinking that midfields the way that we play Two different worlds. Compare, like, if you compare them, wow, it's shocking if you compare them, you know. And it's one is real quality, the other one is, it's not bad, but like, it has less quality. And that could be the case, could not be the case. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Before we do that, hit that like button. Let's get to 75 likes, at least 75 likes. So hit the like button now, subscribe to the channel, and uh, let's jump straight into uh, the video. Okay, let me pull up my notes as well. Here we go. Um, okay, so the first one is like just the standard box stats. You know, the shooting. Um, the minutes played I are, are quite similar. You know, the, the starts are quite similar. So I think it's very fair to uh, compare both midfields as well. You know, uh, the 90 minutes basically, full not full 90 minutes, but if you, if you divide it, are extremely similar. So... It's fair to compare them. Um, what stands out, obviously, Chalanoglu, 12 goals. However, uh, Nampens, two. <laughs> like, it's um, it's two. And it's, well, like, it's still impressive that he takes so many pens and he puts them all away. Like, you need to give him credit for that. Like, he scored nine goals. Um, and as, uh, did I say 12? Nine goals, obviously. Um, it's, it's still impressive that you put the pens away like it's it's not a given you know look at Vlaovic so and you need to give him that however it, it kind of inflates the the numbers uh quite well because if you just you know if you put the put the pens away which you cannot do but like let's look at in game uh it's not that bad basically you know uh, McKenny didn't score but he's been extremely unlucky or like his finishing has been off because he got in some very good positions the last couple of weeks. He's just not finishing. So that obviously cannot happen if he gets a chance this Sunday, uh, tomorrow. However, the, the, the stats are not miles apart, you know, goals-wise. Stat-wise, I do think they're a bit, you know, if you look at Mkhitaryan, six. Um, I mean, that's a lot. That's quite a lot. You know, I wish we had a player with six assists in that midfield. We don't have that. Three, two, three. It's not that bad but if you watch the game you know like there's missing quite uh, a lot what i did find interesting was um was uh the the shots the shots on target uh rabio man uh, 11 shots on target this season and i'm not gonna lie i cannot recall the 11 shots on target and maybe i'm blanking it out maybe like i said at the start of the video i may already made my mind up before I actually went into it, into the numbers, but like 11 shots on target is, uh, it's quite a lot, you know, it's quite a lot, you know, shots on target per 90 minutes, he gets quite a few of them, you know, and it's, it like, if you look at the numbers, like he has double the shots on target than anyone else in that midfield, it is impressive, or like impressive, it, yeah, it is impressive if you think about our midfield, and their, their midfield and how they play, you know, and how you can recall how we play. It is. I was surprised when I saw that stat because it is double than everybody else. Obviously, Locatelli, 
Nara. <laughs> Nara. Chalanoglu, yeah, I mean, it, it's different, but the, the Locatelli one is, a, is quite uh, it's quite sad. You know, I know we place a deep role uh, position, but, like, that, that's poor. Like, one shot on target, that's <laughs> that's... That's weird, you know, for a player with the caliber of shot, Locatelli, you would assume that in certain games, you know, at home, you will get a bit higher, you will get in a situation, but that tells you, like, he's extremely, or Allegri is extremely strict with his role, and he just says, put, you know, and that's that's about it. So, th- if you look at the balance, it's quite unbalanced for the Inter midfield, it's a bit all over the place for our midfield, like, it's Rabio, then it's kind of Locatelli, uh, McCandy, and then it's, yeah, well, Locatelli is nothing, so... That was uh, a bit weird to see, especially that Rabiot won 11. I, I didn't, I had no clue. I'm not going to lie, I had no clue. Um, now let's move on to uh, some passing stats. Um, it's, let me bring up my notes because otherwise I'm going to, okay. Um, so passes completed, um, there is a difference. Um, you know, if you look at Chalanoglu and you know and Locatelli, similar, but there is quite a difference, you know, and that's just purely based they have more possession, you know, and that's how they play. They do have more possession. Also, they play like they play between each other. We don't like when we do that with our midfield. They take touches, you know. They take a lot of touches. They don't make a lot of passes, you know. And if you watch my uh, Alcaraz uh, video, go watch that as well. I kind of implement like as I kind of said that like we we take a lot of touches on the ball in midfield, but we don't play a lot of passes. Also, like not having possession quite often doesn't help into it. Like doesn't um, do much to the stats. But like if you look at the 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 stats, they're quite impressive. Now the completion percentage is uh, for McKenny. Uh, as expected, you know, he, like, if you compare it to the other guys, McKenny is kind of, you know, uh, the, the ugly duck in that, but I don't want to, you know, shit on McKenny, but that's who he is, like, he's, he, like, his passing is not great, it's not fantastic, um, it's, I, it, it's kind of in line what I was expecting, you know, we don't have a lot of possession, we take a lot of touches in midfield. We we slow down play. That's not the case with Inter. Like it's not that they play at a high light, like a lightning uh, speed of football. They don't do that. However, they don't play um, or they don't keep the ball in their own possession. Like even if it's a useless pa- pass to between Chalanoglu and Barella, they will do that. They will just do that to kind of bait players and then accelerate. That's what they do as well. Like they accelerate really quickly. They do. You know, out of nowhere, that's what we don't do. Like, we slow down play, and we play it to our uh, wing backs, and that's how uh, we go. Okay, that was good. And that's how we do it. That's how we do it. Um, then if you look at the type of passes, um, the Inter one, ob- like the, like I said, short is high for Inter. It's higher than us. It's not, it's not much higher, but it's also you need to see it in balance because we take less, so we have more chance of like the completion could should be better <laughs> for us because they do it more often however they make more passes even short and it's more clean it is more clean even the medium one in my opinion is cleaner now the interesting thing is the long one it's not again a big difference but there is quite a difference and again that's just how we play they don't um they they're not, like the midfielders they have, they're not really built for it, in my opinion. You know, they have a style of play implemented to play those short passes between each other more often than the long passes. If you look at Locatelli's numbers, it's high. It's the same as kind of Chalanoglu. It's kind of the same thing as well. Um, you know, however, the completion for the other twos is quite um, long balls. Excuse me, is quite significant. It is better, like six percent. You know, it might not be much. It is quite a lot especially if you look at McKenny as well because 70.1 70.3 excuse me I was shocked you know because um that's that's quite good you know that's quite good if you look at the medium uh passes uh for McKenny that's that that's really poor you know uh, which is extremely weird <laughs> like uh don't ask me how like short is good long 
completion, 71. I think that's good with his technical ability. I was expecting much, much worse. But the medium one, I think, is really poor for McKenny, which is a very weird thing because I'm assuming... Like, I was expecting it, the long balls being... It's lower, but I was expecting it to be extremely poor, you know? Uh, but the medium one is, is, is very strange because we don't ask him to do ridiculous stuff. Uh, it's just, at times... Yeah, he makes wrong decisions on the ball. Like he keeps it all, uh, he keeps hold of the ball a bit way too long, in my uh, in my opinion. And when he meets the bridge, a certain gap, and needs to speed it up, I think that's where it kind of goes wrong for McKenny as well. But that's, um, I think that's 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 what we already knew in general with with McKenny. Um, let me see where we're gonna move on now. Um, I had this one ready, I think. Let me get the notes back. Yeah, <clears throat> defensively. Uh, because if you think about Inter, if you think about Juve, you think, well, one is defensively better. The other one is uh, attacking uh, better, basically. That's what you um, would assume. Um, but if you look at Mkhitaryan and Chalonoglu, they're busy. They're busy. Actually, I'm extremely surprised that Barella's number is that. Like, if you... Like, if you think about Barella, you think, man, he's getting in there. Like, high-intensity player, in my opinion. Uh, but if you compare it to Mkhitaryan and Chalonoglu, and I know he plays a bit higher, however, it's still... Um, I was surprised. I was surprised to see that much of a of a gap, and even a gap compared to our players. Because when I think about Barella, and I know, like, going forward, he's not he's not bad, you know? But still, like, it's... I was surprised with that number. Uh, but let's focus on our players. Um, the McKenny one obviously stands out. Defensive third, you know, tackles. How many times have we seen McKenny just making up ground to win the ball back or to make that last-ditch tackle? That's, I think, his strongest point this season. You know, I, I'm really impressed with that aspect because it takes um, a lot of focus and a lot of, you know, commitment to it, basically, because it compared to the others... Um, it's high, like it's extremely high compared to the others. You know, it is twenty five, and that tells you what Allegri is asking for McKenny and how McKenny is playing as well. Because if you move a bit further down the line, you can see how our, how higher up the pitch uh, it goes down drastically, especially in the middle of the pitch, which is weird. It's really weird. It's a nine. That's very low. Barella is kind of in that, in that bracket. You know, Rabiot, Locatelli is kind of in line with what the other two guys are doing. But nine is very low, in my opinion, in the midfield, which is a bit weird. Like, I'm not going to lie. It is a bit weird. But the way we play, if you just think about it as well, like I said earlier, the highlights of McKenny, a lot of those highlights is him tracking back and making that tackle in and around our own uh, final third, you know, in and around the box. Um, he does that quite often. So... Maybe it shouldn't be surprised, but like nine is, uh, it's, it's very low. Like, I'm not going to lie. Uh, what I did find interesting is uh, tackles in the attacking third. Um, yeah, it's a bit low for us. You know, I think Inter are in line with, with what, what it should be, not with the extremes. You know, Liverpool, if you look at those stats, they're extreme. Uh, but that also tells me a little bit, you know, the difference of style. We play Inter, like Inter are a team that will... They can give you the ball, but they can also pin you back uh, and put you some under pressure. And we kind of saw that already this uh, um, season, basically. Um, yeah. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, the blocks. The blocks. And actually, that was funny because it was going high, low, 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 higher. Um, if you give the ball away to the opponent more, uh, those stats are just going to be up. They are going to be up uh, because... At the end of the day, um, if you're going to sit back, you're going to have more uh, blocks, more passes blocked, and whatever you want to call it, interceptions. Uh, I was uh, surprised with the Mkhitaryan one, and if you compare that with Chalonoglu and Barella, like the work rate from Mkhitaryan is extremely uh, well, and I'm shocked, you know, because I don't know how old is Mkhitaryan, 34 maybe? He's playing at an extremely high level this season, and... I'm actually stunned, you know, I, I think credit to Inzaghi, because if somebody told you Mikitari will be play at this level uh, consistently, I don't know, five years ago or four years ago, everybody would say you're you're crazy, but 
credit to him because he's playing uh, at a very level, uh, very high level. Now the clearances was where I left uh, <laughs> because I just look at those numbers. It's like 27, 13, 70, 80, and then it's like 43, 47, you know, and that's for Locatelli and McKenny clearances. Again, we sit back, McKenny, and that's when, if you watch my Alcaraz video, uh, I think he's going to come in for McKenny. It's going to take away defensively. It's going to bring in uh, attacking wise. Like they're like in that regard, they're extremely polar opposite but i thought it was very funny when i looked at the numbers i was like okay 27 13 70 and then i ended with like 47 i was like damn it <laughs> like that's a lot like that's actually uh high that's extremely high to be honest uh but again that's how we play that's how we uh set up as well um and we kind of need that uh, need accept need to accept that excuse me um Possession wise, uh, obviously the touches of Locatelli are going to be high, but then if you look at the touches from Rabio and McKenny, they're very low. And you you might say, you know what? Yeah, you know, because Locatelli will have more touches of the ball. But if you look at Barella, Mikitarian, it's it's high. And I said it earlier, they they take a lot of touches, but also they play between each other quite often. I don't know if anyone really watched Inter a lot of games. They can keep the ball on their own half and then out of nowhere accelerate and that ball is in the back of the net really quickly. That's how they play. You know, they, they can do that and that's why all those numbers are inflated compared to ours because we are not that team. Like, we're just not that team, you know. If you, like, the, excuse me, the touches and the, in the, excuse me, in the, middle of the pack that's where uh, what I was going to go like it's 600 8 600 it's extremely low for McKenny 400 and 500 for um for um Rabio excuse me obviously Locatelli is going to be there always uh as well but then in the defensive third it is okay like it's in line with what it potentially should be now if you look at the attacking third as well that's where the difference will be made because Locatelli obviously doesn't get there, but Chalonoglu kind of plays the same, you know, in position wise, whatever the idea, but his numbers are double. We sit back like Locatelli is not allowed to cross midfield. Basically like I'm, I'm being, I'm going overboard, but it's different to way to the way interplays. Like it's completely different. They are allowed. All three of them are allowed to get, in around the box and have a lot of touches on the ball. It's a, like look at the numbers. Like look at the Locatelli one. Like that that stands out so badly, you know. And I'm not saying like Rabiot is also not that high. If I'm being completely honest, uh, McKenny is, but the Locatelli one stands out. And it's it's not like is it a worry? That's how we play. That's how we set up. Uh, but that also explains like the only one shot on target early on from Locatelli because. <clears throat> He's not allowed. He's extremely disciplined with it. I'm not going to lie. You know, he does what he's asked uh, to do. Um, but I thought that was kind of surprising. I was not expecting it to be that low. And I, I'm, I, we watch every single game and you kind of have that feeling. Uh, but you're not really expecting that, to be honest. Or like I wasn't really expecting that. Um, but yeah, take-ons for Locatelli, they are quite impressive. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, 75% successful take-ons, that's, that's impressive. It is impressive. And it's also good because if he plays that deep, it means he needs to get out, out of trouble and he tries to beat his man to, you know, get that ball out quickly, you know, or free up some space. And he's quite good at, you know, if you compare it to the other guys, um, yeah, it's a, it's a different league. Like if you look at McKenny, it's, um, it's sad. It's, it's sad. You know, it's, it's not what you're looking for. Even if like the other numbers don't, make up for it like the work rate makes up for it like we said like we saw but like on the ball it's it's very limited uh as well but then you look at the carries and you're like it, it's it's double <laughs> it's insane like it's actually double it's 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 uh, i want to say unbelievable it's not unbelievable because i made a note uh let me see if i save the note and uh, let me see i didn't save it my bad I uh, didn't save it. Um, 
Yeah, I didn't save it, excuse me. But yeah, even, like the carries in the final third as well. Um, the Barella one, okay, is in line. But if you look at Chalonoglu, if you look at Mkhitaryan, like they, like they carry that ball, which what I was expecting or what we all expecting from maybe Rabiot because like that's what has been put out there by Pirlo and by Allegri. He carries the ball. But if you look at the numbers, you're like, does he like does he really carries the ball like I, i've not seen it to be honest not at a consistent basis and like you can see here like it's i don't think it's enough you know overall like there are different midfields like quality wise different players either do have more quality in the midfield like pure technical quality they have more quality in the midfield it helps the way they set up the way they're allowed to play it doesn't really help the way we play. We are ext- like we are the opposite of of uh, of um, Inter. Inter can switch it up, you know, and they can play high tempo, you know, and put you under pressure. We can put you under pressure, but we cannot really play high tempo quality ball. That's I think the big difference because we have players that are limited. That's it, and we have a style of play that just not really allows that at all. You know, it's get that ball out to uh, Kostic and we go from there. You know, try to link up play, try to throw that ball in, you know, whip that ball and That's how we play. That's not our Inter. I think everybody saw that Inter clip where you just, I don't know, they slow play down for like one minute, playing it between each other, you know, back, midfield, back. And then it was like boom, boom, boom. And it was in the back of the net. You know, like what just happened? We don't have that ability at all. Like <laughs> we have absolutely... Like we are the complete opposite in that regard. We can we can slow down play, but I think we slow down play actually to help each uh, uh, ourselves with the players we have out there. So, are we gonna win the, win the midfield battle? If we're gonna win the midfield battle, battle, excuse me, it's not gonna be on quality. You know, it's gonna be on we're just gonna outmuscle them and we're gonna make it a very ugly game. Basically, uh, we're gonna try to get the tempo out of that game. We're just kind of forcing them into making mistakes um that's it because i don't think quality wise we're just gonna outplay them in midfield it is a big topic because if you if you completely drown in that midfield you're just gonna lose and you're gonna lose quite easily as well basically it, it is gonna happen if you just completely lose control of that midfield at home we controlled it in the second half we controlled it in a way i didn't like we sat back way too much and we never allowed ourselves to have anything going forward because we accepted it and Inter were in full control and we had no idea how to get out of it again. We cannot really do that tomorrow because if you go, let's say you do that and you go down a goal, then we need to switch it up. And I think at that point you're done. Like they're just going to, they're just going to outplay you. So it's going to be interesting how we're going to approach the game. I think Inter will come at us. Um, they, they will. Um, it's just, can we deal with it, especially at the beginning and then get back, like, just get our footing into the game and play our game, you know, see it out and uh, nick it. I think that's that's the game plan. I think we're going to go out there to nick it. But in a nutshell, I think the obvious things are obvious. Uh, they do have more quality. They play a different style of play. You can see the numbers are inflated. They're deflated. I, I actually had something else as well, but I'm, I'm not sure I I made it correctly. Um, did I made it correctly? Oh, here we go. I, I made it correctly, but where are my notes? Because I attached some notes to it, but I lost them for some reason. Uh, let me see. No. Yeah, I made some notes, but I, I, I lost them. So this is this, I guess. But yeah, the goal and shot creation. Um, yeah, man. Um, <laughs> like the difference is obvious. No, no shock. No shock at all. The only shock maybe is that uh, Rabiot was a bit lower than McKenny, maybe. Uh, but like the difference with the inter, um, the inter uh, midfield is quite impressive. You know, it is impressive. And I will read out because I looked up shot creation actions uh, on FB Ref and I've looked it up on um, Opta and they kind of describe it in a different way. So this is FBF. Uh, FB ref, so I'm gonna read it out because Opta has quite slightly different uh, phrasing of the um, 
the stat. So a shock creation action, um, the two offensive actions directly leading to a shot, shot such as a pass, take-ons, uh, drawing a foul as well. Note, a single player can receive a credit for multiple actions and the shot taker. So if you re hear that, the stat, like the stat is big. The difference is big. However, if you read out the description, what it means, and you think how we play, and you think about how we approach games, it's not that shocking, is it, you know, from our midfield? Because I didn't look it up from our wingers, but that probably will be higher, um, or like higher compared to what it should be, like in, in, uh, in proportion, basically, not like for like. But the difference with Inter is, is staggering. Like it is, it's double, like it is double. And if you look at the X, XG and all those things, it is extremely higher for Inter because of all these things. Like we play a different football, like we play opposite styles. Not when I say opposite styles, we don't play Juve and we play Liverpool. It's not to that extent, but like the idea behind it is very different you know and that's when you look up xg for lotaro and inter in january like wow that's crazy and is it really like it is if you compare it to ours but it is not if you just look in the context and the way we set up basically so this one is uh it's a staggering one like it is the big one you know if even if you look per 90 it's uh it's, it's yeah obviously it's double but like it's double. And first, when I saw it, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, the, the game time is not similar. You know, Barella out. I don't know. And then I added the game time, the minutes. And it's, it's, it's like you can see, it's very similar. So the reflection of it is quite, uh, is quite staggering. Like, it's real. And we need to somehow keep that at bay. If we can do that, you have a very good shot at just winning the game Juve way. If you let them get into it and you let them, you know, push, like you, like I said earlier, and you let them camp in around the box at the Miazza, I think you're just going to lose. And you're going to lose, maybe not embarrassing, but like a 2 nil or something. And you're just going to walk out there and you're like, yeah, man, what did you expect, basically? But let's see, like, I'm not going to go doomsday. I'm going to make a video tomorrow that's going to come out just in general, the Inter, you know, how they're doing this season. So check that out. Check out the Alcaraz video and the preview I did with Alberto. Or, and a preview I did with uh, Anthony from Inter Worldwide, you know, because um, that was a good one as well. That being said, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification as well, and I will see you tomorrow in the, the step preview, and then obviously post-game, uh, hopefully in a very good mood. Thanks for watching. See ya. Ciao.